most comic book shops, you can expect to find certain things. Things like collected comics, in trade or as they're referred to, trade paperbacks. And yes, Comic Book Addiction has many, many trade paperbacks. About half of that is from Marvel Comics. You can also find the classic comics, ones that will command a high price and were from the Golden or Silver Age of comics. In good condition, they can go for quite a bit of money. That's not only that you can find that here, though. There is, of course, the collected at comics, such as Mouse or Watchmen, and figures. Some people really enjoy having a small figure sitting on their desk. You know, it perks them up when they see it. Other folks, however, need something a little more grandiose. Each of these figures is about 12 to 20 inches tall, and they usually command a fairly good high price due to the high quality materials and detail. Folks are just looking for something different. In this case, ugly dolls. Yeah, they really, really are ugly. So Steve, you're the owner of uh, the store. I am. What do you think of uh, the crowd that you usually try? Uh, people seem to really like the store. A lot of the events we're running, we're getting upwards of 16 people. Uh, this weekend's a long weekend, so it's a bit quiet, but uh, overall we're getting good crowds. d and I think we're up to maybe 18. Uh, Magic pre-releases, we're getting like 20 to 25. The heart and soul of the store, however, is not so much the people who just come in to collect comics, but rather the people who come in to game. On Friday nights and Saturday mornings, people come in and to play Magic one of the a great classics of collectible card games. It's a highly competitive of a game that it involves a lot of thought and planning. A particular note is the fact that it, it, people of all ages are able to come and be equals here. In this case, we have people ranging from 45 to 16 playing. And I've seen people who are even younger are enjoying it. There is, of course, also a monetary factor in Magic. While $14 for a single card sounds pretty steep, the shop has uh, other ones, which date back to first edition, and are worth over $300. Tell me about what's up. Uh, we're running a Pokemon tournament right now, so we have both cards and we have to play. And uh, it's free to play. They can come in and they run from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. Cool. And then if they win, um, they get extra points on this for playing cards. And uh, just for playing, they receive foil exclusive cards and some Pokemon matches. Like that. Cool. Oh, you get one in the comments? Like Sarah said, that's a lot of people. Full house. In a space about half the size of one of, of Toronto Film School's classrooms. On Wednesdays, you can find many people coming in to play Dungeons and Dragons. In this case, three college ladies, and also there's a, a young boy. 
They are longtime friends and enjoy the imaginative and cooperative elements of, of the game, considered to be the oldest of role-playing games. Grant here is 10 years old. I know it looks like he's having a tough time, but he's been uh, coming in faithfully for six weeks and uh, has shown incredible enjoyment in it. The game requires some degree of imagination and creativity. In this case, it's, while it doesn't look like much, the players are currently involved in a furious battle with the undead. As I said, teamwork and creativity are keys to victory in this game. To like Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. Um, yeah, they're all funny and kind of weird, which is awesome. Damn straight. <laughs> and super nice. Super yeah. nice. You, you certainly get a cross section of everybody. Uh, from the. Uh, oh, you want the other side? They got the intellectuals yeah, to uh, the. Solid. With the with the monkey. No way. Take a look. For lack of better terms. See it on the top there. Yeah. The ultra nerd. Right Many more or games can be found out at the store, such as Munchkin, a popular or game amongst players who let, don't think of themselves too seriously. It features a level of psychology and to put a, a good old, old Texas Hold'em poker to total shame. Other folks prefer games like Heroes Quakes which allows them to control a small group of heroes and villains in a tactical board game against each other. Much like with Magic, there is a collectible aspect to this game, and also a, a bit of a money factor. Still, many people enjoy it. Lastly, there are, of course, the variations on classic games, such as Risk. It's not really the just the comic nerdy type that everybody thinks, actually. And, uh... <laughs>